Next up, South Korea. <laughs> yeah, and I'm smiling because I am in South Korea. But yeah, um, South Korea continues to be a great um, destination for teaching English abroad. Also in 2021, there are also a lot of attractive benefits in South Korea, like paid airfare, paid housing, the pension scheme, which you basically pay into the national pension scheme. And then when you leave Korea, you get all of that money back. So depending on how long you stay, it's a couple of thousand dollars that you then get um, in addition to your end of contract bonuses and all of that. So that's really nice. Um, South Korea also has some of the highest salaries to be found anywhere in Asia between 1,600 to 2,400 US dollars. And um, there's, like we said earlier, the EPIC and the TOC program. So again, those are two um, government funded programs that place teachers into public schools in South Korea. Um, the requirements are usually a bachelor's degree in any subject. So again, it doesn't have to be education. It doesn't have to be in English. My bachelor's degree was in management, business management, and um, I was still hired a TEFL certificate. But for South Korea, it's you need to be a, pa a passport holder of certain English speaking countries. So to get this E2, that's the E2 teaching visa, you need to be from either Canada, the US, um, the UK, Ireland, South Africa, uh, Australia or New Zealand. So those seven. Um, however, there are workarounds. So if you're not from one of those countries, there are certain workarounds. Um, South Korea also has a work and travel uh, visa for many countries. Um, there's also creator visas you could get. And um, there's other options for long-term visas or if you, you know, were a student here, you graduate, things like that. So there's different kinds of options. Um, all right. And oh, COVID, forgot the COVID-19 info about Korea. It's also a 14-day quarantine that everybody has to go into. And the quarantine costs are also mostly free. So typically how it works when, because you get paid housing. So your housing is already lined up before you come and you have a permanent visa um, when you enter. So people who have a permanent long-term visa, they can quarantine at home. And since you already have a house lined up, you can quarantine there instead of at a hospital or a government facility, and then it doesn't cost you anything. And you also get like a little, depending on where you teach, in what province or city, you get like a COVID uh, starter pack thing with like food in it and masks and um, yeah, like uh, necess necessities um, when you first arrive. And I know, I know a couple of people who have gone through that. Um, of course, it's really hard, you know, two weeks in quarantine. I mean, it's hard anywhere, but imagine you're like new in this new country that you've always wanted to go to and you have to sit in your apartment for two weeks and you can't go out. Um, I don't know, I just thought this really horrible. But um, yeah, you know, you go through it, you have this little starter pack and um, yeah, then you start teaching. And so, yeah, it's really good. Um, let me go back to some questions. Okay, Musa, Musa where asked when China will start issuing visa and what are the latest news to go to China? I just talked about that in the beginning so um, you could rewatch that part, but basically um, China is issuing visas uh, for teachers right now. You just need in an additional document called a PU letter, which is an invitation letter. And usually your company or the school, they will get that for you. Okay. Mm. Okay, Kenny asks, how do country Countries hire teachers for international teacher job in COVID situation by video calling, Zoom meeting, or video conferencing. You know, this um, was also the case before COVID. A lot of countries hire in advance from when you are still in your own country. And then it usually goes like a Skype interview. Um, so that's not really new or because of COVID. That's been going on before as well. So you do a Skype interview 
And sometimes you also have to teach a mock lesson. So they would give you a topic, you have to teach this and this and this, uh, you know, prepare a 20 minute mock lesson and teach it. So that's also, or sometimes you need to record it and send it to them, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, then we have a question from Mahdi. Is it the teacher who chooses the course book and what to be taught or is, is it the school's responsibility? Um, so this depends on the school. Um, the schools that I worked at, so in China, it was more like the school that I worked at there, they did have course books, but you could also, you know, put uh, create your own lesson plans and your own activities and stuff. Um, and at the school that I worked for in South Korea, they provided everything. They had a very outlined curriculum at that school because it was a national chain. So the idea is that all of those schools do the same thing uh, every week, basically. And it needs to be in line with all the other schools in the country. So we knew exactly what we had to do and when and what page and which worksheet, etc. So it depends. Some schools, um, they, you know, want their teachers to create their materials and the, the curriculums and stuff like that. Um, and other schools, they give you everything. So it depends. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. We are ITTT, the leading provider for TEFL and TESOL training courses. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking the button down here and click on any of the videos here on the left for more interesting teaching tips for getting certified to teach English abroad and online.